cheese. <laughs> We're not standing alone. We're not even standing. Oh. So you guys all ready now? Okay, we'll start for real in a moment. <laughs> now welcome to the last session of the conference where Larry and I will have a few questions, mostly Mike asking, him answering, hopefully. And then we will do the lightning talks afterwards. But first, I think I'm slightly underdressed for this, so just a second. Hey, you just removed your mic. I know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think I'm slightly overdressed for this thing. <laughs> So, that should be a bit better. I so, still got better socks. This is true. So, let's start at the beginning. I was born at an early age. <laughs> I, I usually go with, I was born a young child. Oh, okay. But, whatever. Why did you write Pearl? And, how can this answer get you thrown out of certain countries? <laughs> Oh, uh, well, uh, yeah, um, let's start the, the, the second, second part of that first. Uh, some countries will make you sign something that when you uh, apply for a visa that says, I will engage in no religious activity. And um, in fact, uh, the, the reason I wrote Pearl in the first place was because I believe we are created by God and we are created in his image, and therefore, since he is a creator, we are supposed to be creative also, and we are supposed to make other people creative. And so, part of the original motivation for uh, uh, doing something and giving it away to other people is to make a place for other people to play around in and be creative and, and, uh, and do things. So, to me, that, that's actually you know, uh, a form of re religious worship to do that sort of thing. Uh, but, you know, uh, if you go out to said sort of country and say that in public, then, then suddenly, you know, maybe you're not so welcome there. Uh, that, that's, um, you know, I don't want to <laughs> name any particular countries, but. <laughs> they know who they are. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. Camel, onion, and camellia the butterfly. Where did they come from? Well, um, camels come from mommy camels. <laughs> <laughs> the, the actual uh, camel drawing was a uh, public, uh, public domain uh, image from uh, some uh, 19th century uh, etchings. Uh, and um, uh, when, when O'Reilly was first doing books, um, they, you know, wanted to, I guess, chintz out on the <laughs> pictures or something. So they were using these public domain uh, drawings for, for the covers of their books. Uh, and uh, they, usually they would ask the author what, what uh, animal they wanted on their, um, on their book and then proceed to ignore the author and pick something else. Uh, I said, I, I don't want that to happen, so I'm actually gonna, you know, pick one that they'll, they'll go with. And, so I told them I wanted a camel, and they said, a camel? I said, why? Well, ugly but, uh, you know, ugly but useful, uh, self-sufficient in a dry place, uh, vague biblical associations with treasure and pearls and things like that, you know. So I, I had a lot of right brain reasons for, for the camel, and, uh, and uh, uh, so uh, I'm one of the first authors. They actually let me have the, the animal I wanted on the cover. Uh, they originally, eventually, they, they sort of regretted uh, using uh, public domain images, so uh, they, they redrew it themselves, and so they, their image is copyrighted, and their, their, the relationship of the camel to the Perl uh, language is, is also copyrighted, but that's about as far as they can take it. <laughs> uh, the onion, well, that, that sort of came from the original pun of uh, the state of the onion, uh, and uh, people decided to run with that. And so we ended up with a nice onion. Um, what was the third one? The butterfly. The butterfly, oh yeah. Uh, well, um, 
One of the many RFCs that uh, we uh, had for when we started off the Pearl 6 effort, we got 361 RFCs. One of them was Pearl needs a new mascot. Uh, so I thought about that. And I'd always wanted, since, since, since Pearl 6 was going to break backward compatibility on purpose, and uh, sort of, uh, and we knew it was going to take a while to sort of uh, come back out into its, uh, you know, into a, an adult form. Uh, uh, it always seemed like the, the butterfly, the, the metamorphosis uh, metaphor was, was sort of going to be appropriate where we, you know, stuff some ideas into a, a, a cocoon or a pupa and then uh, we wait a long time and then out, out pops something beautiful. Uh, so I always kind of wanted a, uh, a butterfly. Uh, when uh, it actually got several years later when we actually had to think about that particular issue, as a community, um, people uh, had all sorts of ideas, and uh, you know some of them were, were more meritorious than others. And I let it run for uh, a month or two, and eventually I just got fed up with it all, and I, I said, <laughs> "Here's your butterfly, <laughs> and if you want to have a better mascot, it has to uh, be as personable and as as uh, you know scalable." And I had a whole list of about ten or. <laughs> 12 things that, that uh, I needed to have in a mascot, and uh, nobody came up with anything that uh, I liked better, so you're stuck with a butterfly. Okay. With a Mona Lisa smile. <laughs> we, we have our first question from the audience. Which audience? Somewhere out there. Oh, okay. They, they submitted it, so it is working. What is your favorite place to visit in Utah? My favorite place to visit in Utah? Oh boy, there's so many lovely places, and, and I've been to many of them. Some as a young child, uh, Zion, Zion uh, I got to Bryce. I, I, like, I like Promontory Point, where they nailed the golden spike in, even if it's not there anymore. Um, but um, I, think, I think the favorite place is, uh, uh, Bryce, Bryce is very, very, very pretty. We just came through there on the way driving to here. Uh, I actually like the, uh, the, 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 uh, the Capitol Reef. My wife and I had not seen that. Um, we didn't even know of it until a couple of years ago. And we were, had a reason to, to drive uh, our kid's car across the country because he was going from uh, Santa Barbara to Princeton. Uh, and we said, well, let's, let's take a scenic route across the country, and where haven't we been in Utah? <laughs> and so we, we go down to this place, and it's this, it's this gorgeous, um, well, anywhere you go in, in southern Utah is gorgeous, but the, the geology changes every few miles, and, and you, you go along, and it's just a, a, a course in, in uh, natural history, because you're going back 10 million years every, every half mile or so. And, uh, the landscape just changes continually, and it also has some great, great stories about you know the barriers that the uh, the settlers uh, when they moved out here they came up to that and it's like this just complete barrier that was in front of them they had to get around, and uh, I think I think we like that uh, well uh, as much because it was our most most recent discovery. Um, there are lots of places in, in Utah that are gorgeous, but uh, uh, I, think th I think that's special to us. Okay. To misquote Miss Jackson, Janet, if you're nasty, what have you done for us lately? What are you working on for Pearl the language or Pearl the community? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I'm working on being an old geezer mostly. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I, uh, I wish I could say that I was uh, as, as uh, able to do things these days as I was when I was 20 years younger, but uh, I, I fight a lot of health issues and you know, frankly the, the 15 years of, of, uh, of cranking on, on the, the Pearl 6 design did take a lot out of me and I've, I've had to spend some amount of time recovering from some amount of burnout. Because for those 15 years, I was, I was just not allowed to burn out. Um, so I've been catching up with a, a lot of things in real life that I put off for 15 years. 
you know, I want to know how much, uh, you know, brush was in my backyard, and, and I have a tiny backyard. Uh, it's worth a lot, though, Silicon oh. Valley backyard. Uh, but uh, uh, I have been, I, I do keep up with uh, what everyone else is doing, and uh, am, am always trying to be available to uh, adjudicate, especially, you know, uh, you know, if, if there's different groups of people that, that have different ideas about how something should be done, uh, and uh, you know, they, I let them thrash it out for a while, but but eventually, sometimes they, they, they come and say, "Well, we need we need a decider," and I, I'm as bad as anybody at that, so they come to me. Um, and uh, you know, just just trying to, to keep it light, uh, keep the keep the uh, the culture uh, healthy. Is part of my uh, my lookout. Um, I, I work uh, on uh, my my particular uh, specialty over the last uh, year or so has been um, if you uh, if you get the precedence wrong in something that you say in uh, in Perl six, uh, then it, if it didn't parse it the way you thought it was parsing it, then you probably end up evaluating something in. Uh, uh, Void context in what we call sync context, and that's usually an, a, a very quick uh, feedback that you did something wrong. And so my specialty is is, is what's called useless use of such and so. <laughs> so you, you see, if you see a useless use of message, uh, that's uh, that's uh, something I put in there. Um, I've been uh, thinking a lot about how to optimize the regular expression engine, but uh, I just. Uh, the the, uh, the the problem of the last year is is that, that my particular health issues have involved high blood pressure and then dealing with the effects of low blood pressure medications. So, getting my brain to work enough hours in a row uh, to tackle some of these things has been a little bit of a problem for me. But uh, we'll see if I can last an hour up here. Uh, but. Uh, so that, that's something I think about. Uh, there, there's various other places I'm, I'm really interested. I, I also have been uh, doing a lot, uh, you know, a lot of uh, just programming for fun, uh, uh, just as a user to try to keep in touch with uh, not just developers, but the, the idea of how do you use this if you're just trying to get something done. Um, and that's, that's always been part of my uh, a bailiwick is uh, developers often, they, they get their, their mind focused in on a particular problem, which is good, thinking is good, but um, uh, it's really easy to forget the end user. And, and in our case, the end users are, are the people who are actually trying to, to use the, the, the programming language and get things done in it. So. I know, I know you never have this problem, man. but uh, that, that's part of my uh, job is to remind people of, uh, of uh, well, yeah, maybe, maybe that's a good computer science-y thing, but I don't know if we can teach that to users right at the beginning. So let's hide it. Uh, so we, we hide a lot of computer science deep down in, in Perl, uh, and, uh, and uh, it's sort of my job to, to figure out how, how that gets learned how to, how to keep Perl a language that, that new users can learn small end first and, and, and yet have it a language that as you become more expert. Um, and this is, this is coming at it just from the standpoint of linguistics. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm sort of the resident linguist, so I, I try to not be the, uh, uh, I, I, I try, to, try to give a different viewpoint than the usual computer science view. Okay. Uh, you stole one of my questions, though. The next one, if you were foolish enough to take some to what uh -huh. would you spend them on? But I think you had a few things in that last Well, I, yeah, there's, there's some things I, I, lots of things I, I wish I could uh, uh, contribute on more than I do. But, uh, you know, we got, we still have lots of, lots of uh, fun stuff, uh, you know, we, we, we've put in a, a couple of uh, years of optimization work into uh, Perl 6 since Christmas, and you know, I, I'd say we've made about as much progress as Java made in their first five years in terms of optimization. But they've had 10 years 
more years after that. Uh, so maybe, maybe in the next two and a half years, we'll get to catch up another five years with them. Okay. I don't know, but uh, there's, there's just lots of things we can do and just any, any uh, number of uh, little bits of it that you can get interested in and, uh, and work on. Um, the, the thing that uh, I, I really like right now, though, is this feeling of, um, um, well, up, up, till, up till now, I, I felt like I could keep all of, pretty much all of Pearl 6 in my head. And it's just sort of exploding now with the, the different community participating in different ways. They, they're doing things that I can't even keep up with. And I, I remember when the same thing happened to me with Pearl 5. You know, shortly after Pearl 5 dot oh, something came out, um, I got this weird feeling that I was like losing control. And it was a good thing, because I was losing control to the community, and, and that I could trust the community to, to carry it forward. And I'm just starting to get that same feeling with Pearl 6 now. So, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's a weird feeling, but I, I really like it when I am not, you know, I, I'm actually becoming more, it's, it's like compared to what the community is, I'm becoming more incompetent all the time. It's, it's lovely. Strive for mediocrity and you can usually meet your goals. Yeah, well, well I, I got some, um, uh, uh, we were on our way up from, from Bryce and we stopped in a Vietnamese restaurant uh, down in Provo and uh, my wife and I and, and, and my nephew, we got some fortunes. It was a, fortunes from a Vietnamese restaurant. Of course, fortunes were invented in California, and I'm from California, so I guess maybe these are actually meaningful. Now's a good but, time. Uh, so we, we thought these were all very appropriate, and they, they were actually fortunes for the, uh, the Pearl community as a whole. Thinking is heavily endorsed. <laughs> That's the first one, you know, and, and uh, you know, not just thinking about, you know, technology, but just being thoughtful, and we just have so many thoughtful people in the, in the uh, in, in our community, and um, you know, and when when feelings get ruffled and you know there's personality conflicts, usually it's the people who you know are thinking about that and thinking about the meta layers of you know how can we get along, and, and they they're the ones that, that bind the community back together. Um, Another one is, is, what great things would you attempt if you knew you could not fail? <laughs> uh, and I think there's also the flip side of that. What great things could you attempt if you knew you absolutely will fail? Uh, and it's, to some extent, Pearl 5 is my answer to the first question. Because there was, there was just no way. I mean, it, the world was ready for Pearl when it happened. Uh, the web and all, and it was just ready for a text processing language, it was ready for a glue language. And uh, so we, we did great things, and it, it, was just gonna, it was just gonna go, and it went you know, like gangbusters there for a long time. And we got a really good push from the whole web thing. When we started the Pearl 6 effort, uh, I remember it's like uh, a year or so after we started it, I gave a talk uh, that was about impossible objects, you know, the you see these impossible objects look like this, and I, I, gave, I gave a talk on a, the universal architectural diagram, which has a, you know, a box and then three boxes hanging off of that, and I made it point different directions. And, and one of them, you know, because it was an impossible object, I, I said, what we're trying to do with Pearl 6, we know is impossible, and we know we're gonna fail. I said this in 2001. Uh, but we're going to do it anyway, because we think we'll end up with a very interesting failure. And I think we have. I think, uh, you know, we, we sort of failed forward. <laughs> and uh, as a result of that, um, not only do we have what we have of Pearl 6 today uh, in the useful, uh, in, to the degree it's useful today, but we also have, you know, managed to prototype a lot of um, ideas that got uh, sometimes more or less successfully retrofitted back. You know, the idea of a state variable, um, 
Of course, smart matching didn't work so well because there wasn't a, a good type system in, in Perl 5. I know whose fault that is. Um, but there are things that, that have, have, have come back, uh, and, and also culturally. Uh, part of the uh, whole Perl 6 effort, we realized, was a reboot of culture and an enabling of the different areas, the mailing lists and, and IRC communities. Um, part of the problem that we were having in the late 1900s was uh, everyone, if, if something was going haywire culturally, everyone was, didn't feel like it was their job to speak up. And after 2000, um, we got a lot better, we're not perfect yet, but we got a lot better at um, empowering people to, to sort of try to keep control of various mailing lists, tell people when they're, they think they're out of line, try to serve as the glue of the community. And so that was a step in the right direction. Um, so what great things would you attempt if you knew you <laughs> would certainly fail? That, that's <laughs> that one. The third one, however, uh, is uh, when I see the, uh, you know, some of the, the squabbles we have as a family and, and between the, uh, the sibling communities, <laughs> as siblings will squabble. Uh, the third fortune here is we all have a lot more in common than it seems. And uh, I don't think I have anything to add to that. Okay. <laughs> You've been touching on community a bit in the last few answers. What advice do you have for people that are trying to find a place for themselves in the Pearl community? Oh, well, that varies by person, but most people find something fun to do and then start asking questions when they get run into trouble. Some people, um, uh, you know, it they, they, depends on what your strengths are and, and, and where you think you can contribute. Uh, just the feeling that you are, uh, you know, finding bugs for other people is, is very valuable. Uh, writing documentation, uh, just reading documentation and telling people when it's not clear or you can't understand it. Um, just, uh, you know, uh, introducing other people, uh, doing PR, uh, uh, like uh, being the peacemakers when people don't see eye to eye, or just translating when people are talking past each other and using different words, or the same words to mean different things, you know. People who have skills in, in that sort of thing are very valuable too. I, it's, they're just any number of ways to fit in culturally, of course, tech, Technologically, there's there's lots of you know, lots of documentation, things, places to play around with, um, but mostly just make sure you connect with some people. Um, we we can have we can have modules out there in the dark pan, but we don't want to have uh, you know dark pearl <laughs> programmers uh, in the sense of you know ones off in the closet that don't interact with others. Um, the real strength is the, the parts of our community that, um, that can welcome. And there, there are, for, for every place of darkness uh, that you want to point out, there are, there are also places of, of uh, brightness. Um, there are people who, uh, are serving, uh, who j are just loving other people. And, uh, you know, my advice is find those people. <laughs> stay, away from the, stay away from the old curmudgeons who are, are you know, get, out, get off my lawn. Uh, and, uh, you know, find, find the people who uh, will encourage you and, uh, and uh, make you a better person. Okay. Uh, Pearl Six. I've Have heard we, of it. You've heard of it? Yes. That, that's, well, that's good. Yeah. Have you identified any use cases that would make it a little more academically interesting to make professors like it? Um, well, I, I think that the, uh, the, the 
perhaps the, the killer app for Perl 6 in terms of academics is simply that it's multi-paradigm. And if you go to a, a, a school and you, you want to take something in, in uh, uh, you know, functional programming or object-oriented pro programming or uh, procedural programming or logic programming, uh, you end up having learning different languages. To have a single language that can encompass all of these, uh, uh, I think would would make a uh, it easy to have at least an, at like an overview course where you are uh, trying to present all of these on on some level to people who are just getting into computer science. I, I'm not saying you shouldn't learn other languages, but um, we've put a lot of effort into making it a multi-paradigm language and. Uh, I think it would, because we have, have tried uh, not only to make it beginner friendly, but also to bake in at a fundamental level um, lots of uh, deep computer science ideas, meta object protocols, and uh, easy to uh, make it easy to deal with uh, immutable data and to, do, uh, to define things in terms of, of other things. Uh, and to uh, evolve the language into uh, future languages. Uh, I just, uh, I, I hope that that can be a, a strength uh, academically. Uh, I, uh, you know, I think that should also be a strength for, uh, for uh, not just in academia, but in, in other places, in, in companies there's, there's lots of different kinds of problems uh, that you have to solve, and, and some problems are just better solved with object-oriented stuff, and some problems are better solved with functional programming. Um, you know, if you can have a single tool that does all those things, um, then you have less training to do uh, of the people you're coming in. So I, I, think, uh, I think we've got a strong story going forward, but... Uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of competition out there and uh, a, a lot of mind share we, we fight against. So we're not too worried about that. We, we're, we have always thought if we actually build it right, uh, they will come. <laughs> uh, so, uh, and, and it kind of kind of goes back to my religious roots too because uh, when uh, Jesus was starting all, all, off his, uh, his whole little thing here, he kept telling people, you know, he'd do a miracle and he'd say, don't tell anybody about this. Don't tell anybody about that. It's too soon to, you know, do the big hype thing. Uh, so uh, we, we've uh, actually, you know, while we've been excited about Pearl 6 over the years and, and some, some subsets of the community have, you know, overpromised. I've always tried not to overpromise. Uh, what we're really aiming for is just a slow, steady growth. We designed Perl 6 in the first place, you know, explicitly as a 100-year language, or if not that, a 20-year language. It's almost been 20 years. <laughs> uh, uh, but the goal has always been something that will work long term. And because of that, we're not really too worried about you know, being a flash in the pan short term. Um, we really, we just want, we just want the, the direction to be upward, not downward. As long as it's, uh, uh, that's, that's, you know, that, that's uh, really all we can, can, can manage. We can't, we can't really control what the next killer app is going to be. Uh, we, uh, we don't know what the world will uh, invent after cloud computing and AI. Uh, maybe, maybe, uh, well, you know, uh, maybe Perl 6 will be the best language for the singularity, I don't know. But well, maybe <laughs> we'll make it run yeah, half yeah. some time. Uh, or if not the singularity, the, the plurality, but, uh, uh, yeah, I, I don't worry, I just don't worry about that. It's just, uh, it's similar to, to the whole development of Perl 6. Um, you know, it did take a long time, uh, but I always knew we'd get done because um, 
you can kind of tell when things are converging. And I, I, my, my, uh, my lookout over all those 15 years was uh, not to try to make things converge too rapidly, but to make sure that they weren't diverging. And uh, that's, that's easy to say. I, I don't know how you translate that necessarily into individual, except it's just what I thought about those whole 15 years. Are we converging on a solution someday? And I, I figured if we were always converging, eventually we would get to Christmas, and we did. Um, and uh, so, you know, that's, uh, you know, the slow and steady wins the race, uh, the, the tortoise and the hare okay. kind of uh, thing. Um, and uh, so we, we pretty much had to do it that way. We were not a company with, a, you know, millions of dollars in research. We just had a set of volunteers to, to, who, were, who were interested in it. And uh, we were trying to do something that uh, is pretty much impossible for a company to do because, because uh, the, you've, you've all read the, well, maybe most of you have read the, the worse is better paper at some point or heard the phrase worse is better. And the fact is, evolutionarily speaking, worse is better usually wins. And we knew we were doing something to violate that, to, to actually do one crank of the, the better is better design actually try to make something that uh, where you, you know, you know, one of our slogans was second system syndrome done right. Uh, and by done right, we meant stretch it out long enough to where we actually could fix all the things that we wanted to fix. And that's what we did, and that's why it took so long, and that's why we got what we ended up with. Um, and, uh, you know, that's, that's to take nothing away from, from, from Perl 5. I, I think that uh, the, the new energy in Perl 6 infused more energy back into the Perl 5 community, in fact. Um, sometimes it was this kind of energy, but... <laughs> um, it, uh, it, it's been an interesting uh, time of, uh, you know, I, I considered... Uh, Pearl six, if 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 uh, if Pearl five was sort of my Hobbit, then Pearl six was sort of my Lord of the Rings, and uh, you know I, I like both the Hobbit and Lord of the Rings <laughs> differently. Um, they're both they're both uh, good for what they are, and they're uh, you know both the pearls are my babies. <laughs> uh. Okay. Taking a little more personal for a moment. Mm. Last night, a few of us learned that your wife is ruthless at the great Del Moody. <laughs> Who's yeah. better at cards? You Who's or her? <laughs> she is. <laughs> uh, yeah, but, but our, our, kids, our kids are better than us. The half card shark um, of uh, both her and me when we... we Crossbred them. Um, it seems like uh, our our kids tended to end up with more than half. Um, so uh, don't don't play cards with our kids. <laughs> Laziness, impatience, hubris. Pick one. <laughs> I, uh, or the alternate I are, was are, are you was are pick you one, drop one, pass one to another community. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Uh, are you impatient for an answer? Uh, no. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I have enough hubris to pick one. Um, Quit being lazy! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're impatient. Yeah. And proud of it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah, the, the, the corresponding uh, community uh, uh, virtues are, uh, uh, you know, diligence, patience, and humility. And I think I, I'm too humble to, to pick one of those. Benjamin Franklin did plan on achieving 12 virtues in his life, and he realized he could never hit the last one, humility, so he just gave up at about eight. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I I, I find that uh, you know, humility is is not is not uh, you know self-deprecation. People often confuse those. I, I think uh, that also is uh, something that I I tie into my uh, theological roots. I I think of humility as uh, thinking of myself. As God, God thinks of me, which, you know, is both good and bad. Um, and I, I find that uh, the humility bit of it, um, you know, the moment I, I, I start trying to, uh, you know, assert myself, I, I th this last year I had my first um, auto accident that was my fault. <laughs> So that is a kind of a come down in the world. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying, still trying to uh, get my head around that one. Um, and uh, you know, uh, I, though I don't have any trouble with laziness, that, that one comes okay. naturally. Yeah. Right. Always willing to do the least you can do? Yeah, always, yeah. Okay, next question from the crowd. What feature or concept in new languages most intrigues you, and do you plan on co-opting it yourself? <laughs> uh, well, uh, one of the things we designed into Perl 6 is, is that it will be evolvable. So I, I don't necessarily know what that, that feature would be yet. Um, but uh, when we do see it, um, we do plan on co-opting it. Uh, <laughs> Usually, the usually co-opting the syntax is easy. Uh, wiring the uh, semantics is is easy to the extent that that semantics can be lexically scoped because we do everything lexically scoped in Perl six. Uh, to the extent that uh, the big idea in a new language is sort of um, uh, violating other lexical scopes and doing doing things that are dangerous. You know, aspect-oriented programming comes to mind. Um, then it gets a little dicier because uh, then you have to like balance out the semantics that the, the module thought it was going to get with the semantics it's actually getting. And so uh, that, that goes a little bit more against the grain of uh, Perl 6. So, whether, you know, uh, it, it's like in, in, in politics, you know, if, if you have, you know, a good stable, system of, of countries and, and states and provinces and localities and then then you know you, you can kind of decide you know that, that's a, like a form of lexical scoping or, or you know you, you know what locality uh, you're, you're dealing with in that case but you know when, when people start invading other countries and and uh, and uh, violating uh, the rights of, of people who are outside their borders then you know uh, the, then the semantics get a little murky, and we'd be a little slower to put that kind of semantics into Perl 6. Okay. Somebody wants to know, what do you use Perl most for? Uh, well, um, in, in terms of frequency, um, the, uh, the, uh, the sounds that play in my house periodically based on various events uh, is like, you know, just going 24-7. Uh, if somebody, if you, if you walk up my front walk, first of all, uh, there will be a, uh, a sonar ping if you're in my driveway. And then if you're coming up the walk, there will be a, a dog go bark. <laughs> uh, and if you actually get up to the front porch, um, it's supposed to have a, um, uh, a cork opening sound, the idea opening cork, opening the door. But that sensor is broken right now, so it doesn't do that. Uh, uh, when, when people call on the phone, um, my latest hack was, um, I, I used to have an ancient caller ID phone, two-line phone, that uh, had an old-fashioned serial port to my computer. And it would uh, do the caller ID, and uh, my computer would make strange noises for uh, the people I know calling up. You know, the, and the, the different sounds we, we pick uh, for different people would remind us of who, who it is. 
So when our, when our, our, our uh, housekeeper is calling, it would be the, the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the genie uh, 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 boing uh, sound uh, for, for magically cleaning things up, uh, things like that. But uh, that stopped working, um, probably because we switched, finally got a, uh, our, our telephones going through uh, an AT&T uh, DSL modem. And uh, so I was very sad that we weren't getting our sounds, and everyone else said, I have to get up to go to the phone and look at it. And they were really, to see who's calling, and they didn't like that. So, um, so I thought about how to do that, and then I realized my, my DSL modem will do syslogging to a different system. And so I, I looked that up, and I said, oh, I'll send a syslog to my, uh, to my uh, main Linux box and to start looking at what it's, what it's sending to me. And sure enough, the, uh, when the telephone calls come in and all the little, little things it's doing to uh, negotiate the phone calls over, over the network, th those all get logged and syslogged to, to my uh, machine. So I, I set up a, uh, uh, a, a Perl program to, to just read these things. And it, it's a little bit dicey because, you know, the, the DSL modem all gets all these lovely formatted packets uh, uh, off the, uh, the internet, but then it, it logs it one field at a time. It deconstructs the, the packet and, and tells me the little bits of it. So my Perl program has to reconstruct the, what the packet was, and then from that it looks at it and says, oh, I got the caller ID information for this, uh, and then, then, it, then I, now, I, now I can uh, get my sounds back. And uh, it's even better than it was before because my old phone, it couldn't pick up the caller ID in the middle you know, if, if you're uh, in call waiting, it gives you a caller ID, but my, my, my phone was too old enough to know about the, the intermediate caller ID, the, the one that happens after the first ring. Um, and it was always later anyway because it, it like, waits a while. Uh, even after the regular caller ID, the, 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 the one that comes over your phone to your, to your phone, you'll notice it doesn't actually show up until after the first ring, which could be quite a while. Uh, I actually get the information from the DSL modem into my server before the phone starts ringing. So often my computer will say who is, is uh, 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 calling even before the phone starts ringing, which is cool, <laughs> I think. <laughs> Pearl is beating the phone. <laughs> uh, that's, that's, that's the main thing. I, 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 I've shown off uh, my... my uh, Chinese character programs uh, to, to some of you, uh, and in some of my talks, I've shown off some of the, uh, the, the programs I use to, to do quiz uh, uh, scorekeeping, and I'll be using some of those programs next week when I'm helping do uh, uh, at a, uh, a quiz meet uh, uh, over in uh, Kansas. Uh, and, you know, I'll just, yeah, I, I have lots of, lots of little okay. things that I, I like to program. One of the features of this conference each year is Bad Movie Night. Uh -huh. Do you have a favorite bad movie or good movie? Oh, well, I, 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 I'm, I'm not sure which, which I found the scariest movie when, when I was a little knee-high nipper. Uh, it, it's a sort of a toss-up between uh, the, the Blob and uh, Invaders from Mars. Those were, those were very, very uh, nice, schlocky movies. Uh, you know, uh, I, I have a fond spot for Plan 9 from Outer Space, I guess. Okay. Yeah. And a slightly more serious question again. Pearl 5 and Pearl 6 as names. Yeah. Why didn't you pick something different? Um, because I, I wanted to go to a Pearl conference. I didn't want to go to a Pearl and something else conference. <laughs> you guys are Pearl people, all of you. Uh, you know, uh, you know at, the, at the beginning we thought that they, you know, might be a little closer together and uh, they did diverge a little more than, than we thought they would. Uh, but by and large, uh, you know, I, I think of Perl as a, not as a particular syntax or, or, or engine, but as a, uh, a, a set of uh, philosophies 
of, of language design that you don't find any, anywhere else uh, in any other language. And uh, both Perl 5 and Perl 6 follow those philosophies. So t on that level, they are very closely related languages. Um, they're both how I think. <laughs> and uh, uh, the, the, the third uh, leg of that is, you know, one can uh, look back and say, well, you know, may maybe, it, maybe it would have helped the marketing of, uh, of uh, Perl 6 if it had had a different uh, name, but I'm not sure that it would help the marketing of Perl 5 to have a different name for Perl 6. I don't think that uh, Perl 6 really stole any mind share from Perl 5 at all. So uh, it, it, there are, you know, maybe some people, uh, some small set of the, uh, the Perl 6 people who would be uh, working on Perl 6 harder, if, uh, Perl 5 harder if they weren't working on Perl 6, but a lot, a lot of the people working on Perl 6 uh, are from elsewhere and uh, weren't, uh, weren't really involved in, in the Perl 6 world. So there's, there's, there's some overlap between the developer communities, but uh, people work on what they're interested in. We're a volunteer organization. We're not gonna tell people they have to work here or there or only one or the other. They can work in both of them if they want. And so um, I, I think that, that's a bit of, you know, a bit of a red herring uh, also. Uh, and, uh, and finally, you know, just because I said so. <laughs> no. Are you writing a book? Am I writing a book? Um, not right now. You're well, no, a, not right now. Um, yeah, that's, that's one of the things I, I, I wish I had more brain for. Um, I, I've got a, uh, an outline of uh, uh, what would go into a, a, a book that would be comparable to a camel. Um, and I've, I've written some bits and pieces of it, uh, but uh, it, it's one of those things I just haven't quite had the brain to have the, the long stretches of time. And I, I keep getting distracted by, by you know, doing things on the internals. I, I, I like to hack on, on the, the internals also, so. Um, every time I say, write book, speed this up, write book, speed this up. I'm gonna speed this up. <laughs> or I'm gonna, write book, make a better error message. Write book, make a better error. I'm gonna make a better error message. <laughs> um, I, uh, and, you know, I, I'm probably the sort of a writer that does better with a co-author to keep me honest and on schedule. Uh, so uh, uh, may, maybe, uh, maybe I can do better on it this year. Uh, but in, in the absence of, of, of me writing a book, I've, I've noticed that uh, um, uh, that hasn't stopped other people from writing books. And there's a whole flock of them out there uh, that, that uh, take, take on various aspects of of, uh, of, the, of the design and, and uh, of uh, things you might want to do, different ways you might want to, to get into the language. And, uh, I, you know, it's also good to, you know, I'll let a thousand flowers bloom. <laughs> um, so maybe if, if there had been a, uh, a new camel book uh, uh, for, or, or a butterfly book or whatever it was going to be, uh, maybe that would have suppressed some of this uh, energy that, that we see going into to writing in various ways. And uh, so I, at, the, at the moment, I am not uh, uh, regretting having uh, put that off, but um, I, I do know there's some demand for uh, you know, something from the camel's mouth, as it were. And for our final question, which is a question I often use at the end of interviews when we're hiring someone, is there a question I could have asked you where you could have shined? <laughs> uh, is there a question you could have asked me? Um, well, yeah, I suppose you could have. Uh, I, I don't think there any, is a question I could have shined on. I, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Gloria, is there a question I could have shined on? There's lots of questions you could shine on. 
Yeah. <laughs> oh, my wife just made a bad pun. Oh. Uh, so I guess I'll shine on your question. Okay. Then I guess we'll just leave it there. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>